This is the whole reason they spent 40 years, you know, in, in camp around the Mishkan. And they could not eat meat unless they sacrificed because they needed those boundaries. It had to be tight in the beginning. They were not ready to go out, you know, to expand the land. Parshat Re'e and the Ishbitzer, and uh, let's take it away. All right, we've got a very esoteric piece today, so put on your thinking caps, everybody, and get all philosophical. We're going to go <laughs> hardcore philosophical today. Let's just take a moment here and talk about this Pusik and the simple meaning to put everything right. in context. That's so right. this mitzvah basically says... That when we get into Eretz Israel, because again, Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses is giving this speech right before he passes away, and the Jews are going to now enter the land. Well, this whole speech is about preparing for being in the land. Right. Now, until this time, we need to understand that meat was only being eaten as part of the sacrifice ritual. In other words, when a, when a person, when a simple Jew brought a slumming, a peace offering, so part of that peace offering was actually eaten by the owner. So eating meat was reserved for special for these special occasions. It wasn't I go get a hot dog, I go, I go get a hamburger. It's hard for us, it's hard for us to conceive of that, that this was actually a sacred act. Meat was not food. It was really a an offering that we partook in. Exactly. Now comes Moshe and he's saying, listen guys. Here's the thing. When you get into Eretz Israel in the land of Israel, and God expands your border, that's the first words of the Pusik, meaning, according to Rashi, that until now, you were right next door to the Mishkan. Yeah, they, 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 camped, they camped around the Mishkan. They were all equal distance from the Mishkan that was in the center. Exactly. If so. you felt, a, if you felt a, a hankering for a good steak, you brought a peace offering to God. It was down the corner. And yeah. you could uh, you shared the food with the coin and everybody, and you could eat the yeah. meat. If you yeah. wanted yeah. meat, you go down the street, you eat the meat, you bring you make a holy act out of it, as you say. Yeah. But now that you're going to be in expanded borders, not so simple to get from Beersheba up to, up to whatever it is. So yeah. not everybody's going to Jerusalem every day. Yeah. So God says, okay, from now on, you're allowed to eat meat just to satisfy your taiva, your simple lust or desire to have a good yep. piece of meat. Yep. That's the simple. That's the simple explanation. Uh, let, let people know how to access the text in Hebrew and English. And uh, uh, what you do is, I'll show you, go to the website, uh, hebrewlearningcircles.org. You go to uh, on the navigation bar to Jewish resources. You go down to Parsha videos and you click on that. And uh, it's there. So, uh, source sheet for Parshat Re'eh. And uh, there it is in uh, both Hebrew and English. So, um, and while you're at it, uh, you know, uh, don't forget to subscribe and, and uh, like, share, etc. We'll, we'll start with the uh, Pasuk itself. And that will be in uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 12, verse 20. It says, Ki archiv Adonai lo hechai kvulecha, kasher diber lach. When uh, Adonai, your, your God, enlarges your territory as promised, or your borders as promised, ve'amarta ochla basar kita venavshecha, and you say, I shall eat some meat, for you have the urge to eat meat. Uh, so you can eat meat whenever you wish. So uh, that, that, that's it. It's pretty straightforward. And like you explained, Rebelli, that was the change. Uh, this was the new addition to um, the instructions as they were earlier in the desert because now Moses is talking about the new conditions they're going to find themselves in 
uh, when they are in the much, much, much broader um, uh, boundaries or land that they're going to occupy in the land of Israel. Before, before we jump into the Ishmael I want to say that he's talking here about God as, as all goodness or God as goodness. And maybe I want to lay that out before we jump in. The way I see it is that uh, uh, obviously this is a metaphor, spiritual metaphor. So, um, so boundaries are going to talk here. They're just going to talk about boundaries as one, the boundaries of one's capacity for consciousness or for faith, right? So he's going to talk about boundaries, not as boundaries of the land, as the pshat is, as the simple meaning is, but the boundaries of one's own, um, I guess, spiritual level. And the idea is that the more, the higher one's spiritual level, the, the greater your boundaries, some kind of personal boundaries, not in a psychological sense, I think in a, in a spiritual sense, are expanded. And then he says that the pashet becholat the vot, to extend oneself into all the goodness, and th- that is where I'm not 100% sure. So what I'm hoping is that as we discuss it today, we get a little more clarity about what, what he's talking about. Um, my, my understanding philosophically, that I want to say that uh, we, the, the, the tradition talks about uh, Hashem, about uh, God as all goodness. And the, the more, more we grow spiritually, we grow into God's goodness. And there's something about the meat that is representative of that goodness because we crave it. So just that we have a material craving for the meat and we want to, you know, we want to enjoy it. We want to uh, sink our teeth into it. So, so it is spiritually that we want to sink our teeth into the goodness, in the spiritual goodness of God. And so that is as much as I could figure out. But let's see now as we read, you know, where, where that takes us. And I think he's going to also talk about the perils, the, you know, where this can break down for us. So, okay, so this is it. Lo no mal, she yetzu chutz legvulam, rak shegvulam itrachev. It doesn't say that when they go outside of their boundaries, when they leave their borders, but it says, Dafka, when their borders expand and he, he's pointing out that, that that is important um, and I think that that's where the risk is that we go outside of our boundaries right instead of allowing our boundaries to expand and then he goes he continues and says Israel <laughs> I'll translate. Because in truth, from the point of view, from the name of God, Havaya, uh, yud Hey vav Hey, meaning from that aspect, as it were, of the divine that has chosen us, has chosen Israel, there are no boundaries. Ancient ruling, there are no boundaries. It doesn't even exist. It's boundless. It's, it's, it's allowed, and maybe more than that, it's, it's um, um, expected that one extends oneself into all of the good, all goodness, all of, all of the goodness. Ach, I said, but... From the point of view, Ach, Bishem Adonai, Hainu Hakarat Adam, Bult Fisato. From the name or the aspect Adonai, God's name that is Aleph Dalit Non Yud, which means the human consciousness and the limits of, of uh, human comprehension. So right, so so here we're talking. I just want to stop you for, for a second. Uh, I mean, there's something really, really powerful about this because he says depends on where you look at it from, with vantage points. God is one. God is one. Shema Yisrael. 
But from our perspective, which is what you were alluding to a moment ago, from our perspective, there are different ways that God deals with the world. And there are different aspects of God's persona, so to speak. There is God as judge. Think about Rosh Hashanah. There is God as the compassionate father, etc., etc. Now, here we're dealing with two specific names. Shem Havaya, the, the essential name of God. And the name that we use the most, uh, the, the most. You, every time we make a blessing, we, we use this word. Right. Yeah. It's, a, it's a holy name that can't be erased, but it, it's, a more, it's an all-inclusive name, so to speak. Now, he's saying Kabbalistically that the four-letter uh, tetragrammaton it represents God's essence. Now, God's, God's essence is infinite. So if, you have no, if you're infinite, that alludes to the idea of no boundaries, no borders. Right. If God is relating to us with no boundaries, then we might think that we also have no boundaries. Mm -hmm. I see no boundaries here. I just see God. Every God. God. You know? But there's the idea of, of the Adnus, the, the Lordship. In Kabbalah, this, this name of Hashem, Aleph Dalu Nun Yud, is Malchus. That means it's the aspect of God which is most relatable to us how god relates to creation us in one aspect god is infinite no borders no boundaries and it, but from the other hand there are plenty of boundaries everything is boundaries right. so, that, so and, now we're going to bring it to me right 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 and, and apropos i just want to say that uh, the word uh adonai eden aleph dalid noon means threshold so eden hachalon you know the threshold of a door threshold of a of a of a window, so it also means Lord, but it also means it also connects it to the word threshold. So it 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 means boundary. The essence of the word, even a Lord, the Lord sets the boundary. You know, like a Lord is an authority, so it's a, it's a boundary in that sense. So so you see that 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 well, I think what he's, he's um, uh, offering us here is it's sort of like the paradox that God is infinite, but also God is the boundary. You know, this is, it's by design. Uh, when he says, Ach Mishem, Aleph Dalet Nun Yud, Hainu, Hakarat Adam Vigvun Tvisato. What he's saying is that, in essence, there are no boundaries, but the boundaries are in our mind, in our, in our consciousness. But he's not saying that as, don't misunderstand him as saying, oh, it's just in your mind. No, it's by, by design in your mind. You know, it's good that it's in your mind. You know, this, this is not a good or bad. No boundary is good. Yes, boundary is bad. It's not what he's saying. He's just saying that the boundaries are part of who we are that, as, a, as a creation, as part of creation. Right? I think it's important because they, they, he's going to build on that. So it is our perception, our mind, that by its construct is is boundary is boundary making and boundary processing right so he says okay so uh um from this from the from the from adonai from the, the human consciousness come all the boundaries um, that tell us that we can extend ourselves to this point, but we cannot extend ourselves be beyond that point. Right. So basically saying that the whole concept of mutar and usr now, mutar and usr means forbidden and permitted. But really, mutar means untied and asur means tied up. <laughs> That's right. That's the literal. I think I believe in Hebrew. It's spoken about. That's right. It. It. Absolutely. So what he's saying: this whole what if everything is God and God is everything, then why should some things be allowed and other things be not allowed? It doesn't make any sense. God makes right. God is everything. We're enveloped. Right. We're enveloped right. by the Godhead. So why should something be off limits? Hainu kamashim sab kamashim matze ba'adam ko'avodah 
רק יוכל להתפשט את עצמו בטובו. אז אנחנו מסבירים מה זה כל כך. זה כדי להקטנט או כדי להגריא that a person uh, finds within him or herself the strength for avodah. And I want to explain avodah here. Uh, I'll open that up for a second. Avodah means service. So avodah means, I mean, uh, uh, literally, traditionally, avodah means prayer, right? Uh, avodah Hashem. But it really means service. It really means um, to do, to take action or to avoid actions. For the sake for the sake of God and within the structure of uh, the mitzvah of Torah so that's Avoda but there's also another way to think of Avoda and this is where especially in Hasidic circle we have the concept of the Ovid the Ovid is a person that takes it upon themselves to do extra work on themselves in order to grow in their spiritual capacity and And um, so, I, so I want to make that distinction because when we read the word avoda, it can be taken as, uh, you know, everybody's doing avoda. If you're doing mitzvot, you're doing avoda. But there's also the avoda, the ovid, which is the person who consciously is working. I, I think it's at a deeper level. And as a Hasidic Rebbe, that, that, was, that was a very big part of their, uh, you know, usually in a in a, in a, in a group of people, uh, A Hasidic court, you had the, the, the smaller group of people around the Rebbe who were actually really extending themselves, you know. Um, so I hope that puts that, that a little bit in perspective. So when he says, Hainu kamashi matzeh ba'adam kwa'ach avodah, to the degree that a person finds within themselves or develops within him or herself the strength, you know, the muscle, you know, to do this work, um, then... To that degree, a person can extend him or herself into the goodness or the goodies, you could say, the rewards. Okay. Now he's going back to the Pasuk. And he's saying this is what it means when the Pasuk says, when God will uh, expand your, um, your boundaries. Kibat Chila. אדם נכנס בעבודה, אסור להתפשט את עצמו. When a person goes into the realm of, of, uh, of divine service, אסור להתפשט את עצמו. The person should not be expanding oneself. כי כאשר יתפשט יותר מדי, because if you expand too much, in other words, if you jump in, jump in too deep, too fast, um, in my reading, you have to ask the Hasidic Mirah, What can happen to you is, is that, God forbid, you would be um, de- de- disconnecting yourself from all of God, from basically the essence of it all. You will forget that this is, all, all you're doing is really in the service of, of having more fear of God or of awe of God. You, you, you can get too happy with yourself and, and forget, you know, and, and God will be out of the picture. You try to expand your consciousness and you lose consciousness. Right. You know, it's so interesting uh, <laughs> what he's saying here. This, I, I mentioned before, that there's an expression, a person can get too big for their britches. So mm-hmm. what he's talking about here is this, you know, when a person starts to learn something about any topic, you know, but right. we're talking about Torah, they think they know everything. Yeah. They, they learn olive base they learn uh, Rashi and they think that now and now they can go on on uh, social media and if a, uh, some subject comes up yeah but the Jewish according to the Jewish people certainly this is okay because blah 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 they become experts yeah. they become Tamid, yeah. Chamim, Tzadikim, everything yeah. they know everything yeah so if I try to step over that line that that that's a dangerous place to yeah. be yeah Yeah. Um, yeah but if I allow for organic growth over time yeah. then that's the natural expansion of my boundary and now I can right. take some steps and maybe have a comment to make yeah <laughs> yeah yeah no absolutely and I think that but I think that's exactly I think yeah that's exactly what, what he's saying um, you know what, what's interesting what's occurring to me as we're talking here is that this is the whole reason they spend 40 years and You know, and encamped around the Mishkan, and they could not eat meat 
unless they sacrificed because they needed those boundaries. It had to be tight in the beginning. Mm -hmm. They were not ready to go out, you know, to expand the land. They, they're not ready to go, go Mount Sinai, get the Torah. Okay, 10 days later, here we are, we're in Israel. Ba Boom. Would not have worked. Exactly. You know, the Gemara yeah. says that it, uh, that an Am Ha'aret, someone who's unlearned uh, a person, is Usr Lechol Basar. The Gemara says that a, a regular, only a Tamil Chacham, only a Torah scholar was is should be allowed to eat meat. A normal, regular, everyday person shouldn't be allowed to eat should meat. Should be vegetarian, yeah. So that's the whole Ki Yarchi Vashem. Now you're yeah. going to the Holy Land, yeah. and I'm giving you permission to do this, but take it easy. You know, it's yeah. got to come, it's got to be organic spiritual growth. Like, and yeah. you said now you're 40 years, now you can handle eating this. Yeah, maybe, right? Yeah. <laughs> but when, so, so just to remind us that, that, that in the beginning he said um, that a person should not uh, extend themselves beyond um, uh, in the beginning, when a person's beginning their, their uh, service, a divine service, uh, they're not, they're, they should not be extending themselves beyond their natural boundary uh, so they don't forget what it's all about. They, they don't uh, get uh, disconnected from uh, the awe of God. When a person builds up that strength of, um, of, of true spiritual vodah, of true uh, service to, to Hashem, and, and for me, I see that as as, as a better awareness, like you just said, you know, like a scholar has a better awareness that it's a, the real, that it becomes part of you, you know, that that awareness becomes a part of you in a natural way. Then a person can start extending beyond uh, the boundaries of their service. And that's what it means that God will extend your, your boundaries. So it's it's he's he reminding us this is beyond just the geography and the geopolitics of of uh, you know of the people coming into the uh, the the land. This is about a, a person expanding their own uh, boundary, and God expands your boundary as you are engaged in your service. That will allow you more freedoms. I knew she tend to but he says, meaning that Hashem can give you so much of that uh, the strength of, uh, of, uh, of service, of spiritual service, uh, to, the, to the degree that all, uh, all boundaries will be um, uh, uh, cast away or moved away from you. And this is all poetry here, you know, you think, uh, to the point that you can even eat meat and not leave, and that will not take you outside of your own boundaries. Because he started, remember, he started, it, it says, he says, uh, he's expanding your boundaries, Dabka. it's not that you're going outside of the boundary. I think what he's getting to there is that you put your best foot forward. If, if when God sees that you're sincere and you're avoided, it's coming from a place of sincerity and yira, and aw, aw, awesomeness. That and you're not not self-aggrandizement and not looking to become the big macher and the know-it-all. You're just doing your steps, step by step. Then Hashem will expand for you. In other words, you won't have to cross over any lines because God will move the the goalpost, as they say. Or you expand yeah. the goalpost for you because he'll see it. It says you you do a little bit, God does a lot, and then you'll so, find hey, then you'll just find yourself in an expanded consciousness, right? Like it'll come a mailer. No, I, I, I get I get the principle, but what is an example of that? How how would that work? I, I mean, for, for instance, I, this is kind of bring it down to very to kids level. You know, you're uh, you're riding your bicycle with uh, tra with training wheels, right? Mm -hmm. And at some point, you know, you you get so good at it that your training wheels don't even touch the ground anymore. 
right? Wow. In some ways, you don't need the training wheels anymore. You know, you've developed, you know. But what does that mean? Yeah, so that's, that's, that's one way question. I'm thinking about it. But that's the question, question is, what, what does it look like? That's for kids. What does it look like for adults, you know, trying to be, you know, trying to grow your potential as a spiritual being, you know, in Vitzel and Elohim, you know, you want to be, you know, you want to grow to, yeah. to your full potential. What does that look like? Well, I, I don't know, but I, I'm thinking it brings to mind when I was in yeshiva, uh, one of the yeshivas I learned in where I went for smicha, um, there was a great tzaddik and, and uh, rabbi, uh, his name was Scheinberg, uh, Pinchas Chaim Scheinberg. Yeah, and I know that. He, was, he lived in Eretz Yisrael. He was American, but he lived in Eretz Yisrael. But he would come to visit family in Monsey. He wore, you, you know, we have the talus cotton, the, the small under, under the, with, with the tzitzis that we wear as a uh, article of clothing under our shirt, like an undershirt with the yeah. fringes coming out. So uh, many people wear this uh, all the time. Uh, and... Um, he would wear many, many pairs of tzitzis, so many that he would he would look like he would like obese. Uh, obese, I would say he would look like something out of a chasu. I don't want to say it out of a circus act. It looked yeah. uh, highly unusual. Yeah. He was a short man, an old European Jew, you know, five foot nothing, uh, and he was a skinny person. But he wore so many pairs that he was out to here. That was an expression of. Of, of holiness for him. It was, it was an expression of his avayda. Yep, understood. Of his exactly. service to God. That's how but he extended I, himself, yeah. If I would go, if I would the next day, oh, Rav Scheinberg did it, I'm going to do it too. Wow, that's a holy, I want to be a holy guy like Rav Scheinberg. If I walk into yeshiva with 15 pairs of tzitzis next day, I would have gotten thrown into the mikveh yeah. by the other boys. Because... Really? <laughs> you know? So I think he's saying, in, a, in what we take on, you know, yeah. some people get very excited. They learn about Torah, they learn about mitzvahs, they get really excited, which is, a, they should get excited. And they right away want to jump steps. They want to get ahead of themselves. Yeah. In mitzvah observance, particularly. Yeah. That's one. Way. And, and he's saying, cool it. It will come. It will, whatever needs to come will come. Yeah. You know, something that when you know Mashiach is, you could say Mashiach is, is that time when everybody, when Kol Am Israel, you know, are in this place where the Kol Chavoda is so developed, you know, your boundary is so big, you know, that you need much less of. You don't have to huddle around the Mishkan anymore. You know, you can be out there, and, and that would sustain you, and you would not forget, um, you know, not forget what it's about. You know, meat eating is really sort of, for me, it's like, right okay, here's my takeaway. It's that it's a symbol for that which you want to chew, you know? So, because uh, we think of avoda always as, uh, you know, the yoke, you know, the sweating bullets and, and uh, you know, spitting blood for the sake of, you know, being the martyr for the sake of Hashem. But here he's telling you, he put you know, it's like what God wants is for you to be, you know, in, in eternal bliss, you know, eventually. I mean, this is a, this is actually a good prospect. It's a good deal, you know, that we're getting. This is not about suffering. Not the question, you know, that my grandparents, you know, were so good at, you know. It's like a, that was, a, you know, a good Jew knows how to complain. And he's saying, oh, this, is, this is the opposite. You got to go for the meat. You got to go for the for that goodness. Um but in good time, you know, and, 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 and in the proper way, in the way that elevates you spiritually. It's been, uh, we're going to stop here, allow uh, our listener to come into uh, into a discussion. To those of us who have been here with us on uh, Facebook and YouTube, thank you for spending the time with us today. Um, we're going to conclude here. Shalom for now. Please subscribe if you haven't. And uh, until next week, God willing, we'll see you next Wednesday. Rahabim lo yuklu Lecha haboy seso ahavo Ahim rahabim